Assalamu alaikum everybody. I hope you're all doing well, inshallah. Um, today I'm going to be talking all about getting into the software engineering industry. So uh, yeah, let's let's get into it. So just a little bit about who I am. So I'm quite fresh to the industry as I recently just graduated in computer science. Uh, and I currently work in the industry as a React Native developer. So what I do is I build apps for multiple platforms and I do that using JavaScript. So I'm writing in one code base and I'm deploying to different platforms. So you've got your Android, iOS and web apps. So that's kind of what I do day to day. Leading a bit on from what Alina was talking about, I'm more into front end. So that's what my role is based on. So I've not done much back end in the industry, but I did a little bit at university. Um, but yeah, that's kind of like what I do day to day. And then I just move back. And I also like to blog about my journey. So when I was in my first year at university, I started to blog about my studies, um, mainly on Instagram. Uh, the reason I did this was just to try and connect with other individuals in the industry and just try and get an idea of you know, what it's like. Um, and I also really liked using, using social media. So I thought, why don't I combine the two of documenting my journey and using social media to try and connect with people. So I'm use of codes on pretty much all my platforms. Um, so yeah, that's what I do on the side as well. So this talk is going to be a little bit about getting into the industry with little to no experience. So, you know, this talk isn't going to say, right, you need a degree and you need to have gone to a coding boot camp and you need to have spent thousands and thousands of pounds to get in. Like, it's not like that at all. So hopefully, inshallah, this talk will kind of break it down so that the industry is as accessible to everyone as possible. So, um, yeah. OK, so this is what I think you need to get into the industry. So when you're learning code and sort of getting into the industry pretty much on your own, you'll need to be motivated and have the passion and determination to kind of work through any issues you might have. And also some patience as well, because coding isn't always very easy, no matter what level you're at. And, you know, your code isn't always going to work. That's completely normal. And um, so you'll need a bit of patience as well. So this is what I think you need for the industry. And then what you don't need is a degree that's going to cost you a lot of money. Um, so a few years ago, companies started to drop the requirement of a degree. So they often look for, you know, things that indicate that you're into coding. So things like um, your own projects that you've done and things that you've learned, courses you've taken online, books you've read, that sort of thing. You know, they're all just looking for passion and people that can be taught how to do things. So yeah, you're never expected to know like every single little thing for your first tech role. Cool. So now that we've covered a little introduction, let's get into actually, you know, the steps that you need to get yourself into the industry. So the first part is picking a programming language. So again, semi leading on from Alina's talk, there's lots of different languages out there and there's lots of different sides you can work on. So there is front end and back end. Now, with my talk here, I've kind of focused on front end, mainly because I think it is a bit easier to get into because you can see results instantly on the page. So like when you change like the color of something will pop up straight away on front end. Whereas on the back end with data, it can be quite hard to visually see what's going on. So I've gone for a, mainly a front end approach here. So I've got three different places that you can start coding. So you've got web development, mobile development and game development. Now, apparently a lot of people here are interested in web dev, which is really cool. Um, I personally recommend that just because there's so many resources out there. So for that, you'd follow the route of learning HTML to build the sort of structure of the website, CSS to learn how to um, make the site look a bit nicer. So like styling and then JavaScript as well to add some interactivity to the site. And one free resource that I recommend is Free Code Camp. It's a series of tutorials online that you can complete at your own pace. Uh, and what's really good about it is it's completely free and you get like a certificate at the end of each like module. Um, so you can show that to like future employers and stuff. So I think that's a really good resource. And if you're interested in other things like mobile or game, I've also listed the typical languages that you would use for them. Now, if you do some research, you might find more languages too, because there's just so many out there. But this slide will give a small overview of the different languages that you could experiment with out there. Okay, so now that you've picked a language, you've picked you know a little route that you want to go down. You now need to find a way to actually teach yourself everything. So What's good about this industry is there's tons of resources out there. So you've got videos, books, documentation. Uh, you know, if you Google for any sort of language and any resources for it, you will get so many hits. And that's not always the best because you're probably thinking like, how do I choose the right resource? 
Well, I think the best way is just to pick something which adapts to your learning style. So if you like to follow videos and you know you you want like an instructor talking at you while you do things, videos are good. If you like to do things at your own pace, maybe like a book or the language documentation would be better. Um, so yeah, choosing the resource is an important step, but once you've got that resource that you're really happy with, uh, it's quite good to just stick with it and try and learn as much as you can from it. So yeah, the obvious next step is to actually study from these materials. Now, I want to talk about two things. One is how you time it, and then the second is how you actually approach the studying. So in terms of timing, I personally recommend doing little and often. The reason for this is because, let's say you do like six hours of coding on like a Monday, and then you come back to it the following Monday, the chance of you remembering all that is going to be quite low, unless you're like super brainy, but you know, I'm personally not, so I'd forget everything. <laughs> so it's better to actually just do little and often, so like one hour a day, one hour a week or something like, you know, where it's a regular block of time that you've got scheduled. That way you'll slowly and incrementally get better with the language that you're learning without potentially just forgetting it all. So yeah, getting like a little schedule and routine in for this is a really good idea. So the actual technique for studying can vary, but the way I like to start with anything new coding wise is first just copy and pasting the code that I see. And by doing this, I'm able to break down the code that somebody else has written. So if I can try and understand each little piece of code that someone else has written already, I can then potentially go off and start writing my own code. So what I do is move back and forth between copying code and then also writing your own code. Now, no matter where you are in the industry, you probably will always be looking at other people's code anyway for inspiration. So it's completely normal. So feel free to move back and forth between these two techniques to learn how to code. Okay, so when you're learning how to code, and especially if you're not at a university or at a boot camp, it can get quite lonely. So I do recommend joining like a, a group online. So, I mean, Dean Developers is one. You've got lots of people in, the, in, the, in our Slack. I believe there's a link in the chat for you to join. Um, and you can also go onto social media such as Twitter and go onto hashtags such as 100 years of code. So basically people here commit to learning code for 100 days every single day. So they might do 20 minutes a day, half an hour a day, an hour a day, however much they can commit. But the challenge is to learn each day and post on Twitter or your preferred social media platform about what you've learned. This is a really good way to learn because not only are you, um, you know, documenting your journey online to find other people to learn with, but you're also holding yourself accountable. So you're probably more likely to stick with it. So I do recommend utilizing social media during your coding journey. So once you've learned the basics of a language, so let's say you've completed a tutorial, read a book, something like that, this is the time to actually start building something on your own. Now this can be daunting and quite difficult, but if you think about your passions and hobbies and maybe think about an app or a website you could build, a like link to that, that can give you a bit of motivation to get started with something um, because if it's based on one of your interests you're more likely to stick with it and try and build something to help you with your passions and hobbies if building something from scratch is a little bit daunting though you could always take something you've built already on like a course like a video course for example um, if you've built something with an instructor you could always extend what you've built already so build out a new feature based on that app you've already got and that way you're not starting completely from scratch but only a small portion of what you're doing will be you know, completely new. So it gives you a nice sort of starting platform and makes it a little bit less daunting. Um, I'd also recommend um, showing your work online. So there's ways that you can actually upload your code online for people to see. So getting it from your local machine to online and that way you can like share a link to employers and your friends and family and stuff. Um, so people can see the work you're doing and employers do love people documenting their code online so they can actually see how you code and it's a really good way to show some projects you've built off you know all on your own without having to i don't know like go to university or something if that's the sort of route you're taking so yeah that's another good thing to do when building and whilst you're doing all of this i do recommend networking now it's kind of linked to what i talked about by joining the online group but um if you start documenting your journey online so on like instagram twitter linkedin just posting about what you're learning following people who kind of do the sort of things you're looking to do and also people that may be in a similar position to you. This will really help build up your network in the tech industry and especially if you're coming from a different industry, this is really, really helpful. And then, you know, once um, things are safe, if you can go in person for meetups, there's a lot of tech meetups like in like a lot of cities. I mean, definitely in Manchester anyway, for any Manchester people, 
Um, so you can meet people in person that are in the industry and uh, gain some advice and stuff like that. And um, yeah, last point here really is that I actually landed my role through networking. So I posted on Instagram consistently and then I connected with somebody who had a lot of connections on LinkedIn. And then when I posted on LinkedIn that I was looking for a role, um, I actually found my current boss through LinkedIn. So um, there's a bit more to the story and you can read more on my blog. I will talk about it now, but I think I've run out of time. So yeah, it is on my blog, which is a uh, use of codes.com. And then this is like the obvious last part is to actually get into the industry, you obviously need to start applying for roles. Now I'd say having at least one functioning project, it doesn't need to be huge, but just a project that works like you can confidently talk about running, that would be really good to have. Um, and another thing is a lot of these job applications or um, job specs even, um, the requirements on that are like things you have to fill. Um, you have to fill the main language. So let's say if it's like a JavaScript role, you do need to know JavaScript, but then you'll often find other services and languages listed that they might be using or you might need to know at some point. So, you know, don't feel like you need to know every single thing on these job specs because you definitely don't. Um, so, yeah. So I've covered more of a self-taught route here where you kind of independently learn how to code, but there obviously are other ways to get into the industry. So you could pay for a coding bootcamp or even just get a degree like I did, or you could get yourself onto an apprenticeship to learn while you earn. So, yeah, so <laughs> and then there's potentially more things that I've missed because there's so many different ways to get into tech these days. Um, so I just wanted to add this slide and just to say there are other potential ways. So if you're really dead set on getting a degree from university, that's still a valid way to get into the industry as it is still recognised and you do gain a lot from university degrees. Okay, so I've spoken a lot. So let's just quickly summarise what I've discussed today. So first, you want to start with picking a programming language based on the sort of interests you've got. So front end or back end, uh, building mobile apps or web apps. Um, after that, you want to find a learning resource and pick something that you know you're able to follow and understand. Um, and then you want to start studying from these materials. Uh, little and often is the best way, hopefully. And then while you're doing that, you want to join an online group so you can find other people who are also studying and in a similar position to you. Uh, and then once you've learned a little bit about the language that you're learning, you want to start building things and post that online, hopefully, on somewhere like GitHub. And while you're doing all that, it is really good to network get your name and face out there so people know who you are and hopefully you can land a job through networking. And lastly, you ought to start applying for roles once you're ready. Okay, so this comes, this brings us to the end of my talk, but I do want to just push one thing. My company are actually hiring at the minute for React Native developers. So day to day, we'll be building solutions using JavaScript and TypeScript. And as I mentioned earlier, React Native is a framework in JavaScript, which is used to build apps for multiple platforms. Now, the salary range is quite big because we're um, considering every sort of level, so from junior up to mid-level and senior, so you don't need to have a particular level of experience. Um, the job is fully remote, the hours are proper flexible, and I do really like in, I'm working here. They went from bringing me from a part-time junior to being a full-time dev, and I've gained a lot of knowledge so far, and it hasn't even been a year since I've been in the industry, so, you know, they've helped me a lot. So. If you are interested, you can scan the QR code on the left or just visit jobs.themorrow.digital and to find out more about the job. And um, that concludes my talk. So thank you very much, everyone. Um, I am quite active on social media. So if you do want to find me, I'm use of codes on like all my platforms, so Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And I also do write on my blog as well. So I've got written formatted posts about my journey as a student and a developer. So if you're interested in that, do visit useofcodes.com. But um, otherwise, that's that's everything. So thank you very much, everyone.